Hello, good evening and welcome back to In The Know, brought to you by The Racing Post and uh, Coral as we've tiptoed into day one of Royal Ascot and we're warmed up, we've uh, uh, got our uh, uh, punting boots on and we're ready to get stuck into day two. Uh, day one, of course, of any festival, Ascot, Cheltenham, uh, you name it, is uh, about uh, uh, getting the, uh, the feel for things and often uh, the market uh, tends to go the way of the, uh, the punters as well. Certainly mixed messages and certainly in the first race today we thought it might not be the case after triple time sprang a huge surprise uh, after racing very keenly and beating uh, the better fancied uh, in spiral and modern games and uh, it was uh, pretty much back to normal from there on in though of course River, Tiber and Paddington giving the Coolmore uh, Tabor uh, team up a, a couple of big winners uh, that's for sure and uh, uh, elsewhere as well we saw more Ascot form coming to the fore with last year's Coventry winner Brad Sell uh, winning the, the King Stand uh, from Highfield Princess uh, and the Willie Mullins 1-2 came in in the last and I'm sure you're all absolutely thrilled about that if you like straight forecasts with the favourite beating the second favourite and I'm sure there are a few of you out there. Let us know how you did on day one on the, uh, the chat box. We are live and interactive throughout the evening, of course, uh, and uh, we're going to get stuck into day two. We pretty much know how the ground's going to uh, be after uh, today's racing as well, and that uh, a little bit of uh, uh, thunder and lightning this morning. Uh, and we've got uh, huge fields, 132 horses running in seven races tomorrow at Royal Ascot. And uh, if day one wasn't to your liking, then 132 horses in seven races is pretty much what Paul Keeley gets out of bed for, isn't it, Kiels? You're going to have to get out of bed because you're doing the morning show tomorrow and then the Actually, evening no, show. No, I'm not doing the morning show you're tomorrow. Not. I've got a morning off. No, I'm, not, I'm looking forward to, to being somewhere else. Thank you very much. Oh, lovely. Yes, uh, punting boots, I heard you say. I need yeah. to go out and buy another pair. <laughs> yeah, you're going to have to go to the, uh, get them re, re, uh, re-shot. Re uh, you're going to get re-shot tomorrow, I'm going to get re-shot, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I've, I've spread a plate and spread a few quid around the place as well. But, but you know, it wasn't a total disaster. I was on light infantry at big prices, anti-post. He got the, he got the frame, called in the wind, did what he always does and gets placed at Ascot. Mm -hmm. uh, I had some shockers as well. I would say uh, Francesco Clemente couldn't win the moment he came out of the stalls, uh, which was terrible. He was just never in a race. Highfield Princess got beat by... Bradsell, every mm -hmm. time I back a really short price favourite at a big festival, they never win. Yeah. I mean, to be fair, that's why, why, why I normally don't do it. But. And the thing is, it, again, if you take the price out of it, you take the betting out of it, you mm. think, well, she's got an absolute blinder. She's yeah, probably she's run up to four. everything else by miles. Yeah. <laughs> Just got beat by better horse on the day. It's as simple as that. That's yeah. what happens, isn't it? Carnage in, in one or two of the races on the Ben, partic particularly. Welcome uh, to the round track. Yeah, 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 welcome to the round track. That's what can happen. Uh, obviously, bring on the night. Probably wasn't going to win anyway, but he got in all sorts of trouble when he was starting to make ground late. And then uh, Ryan Moore just thought, I'll take the ball by the horns on Vauban and let's just settle him in front. And they all said, oh, OK, Ryan, off you go. And <laughs> best horse, give him, a, give him a free lead. He's just going to run away from him. And that's what he did. Yeah. Very good performance. They kind of looked at him and thought, God, I'll tell you what. He was also different class. He'd have won. Yeah. If he'd won, he'd been held up last, I think. But uh, It's remarkable, isn't it? Because, again, Ascot is a track um, that you tend to, especially on the round course, it's very hard to get those fractions right from the front. Yet last year, Ryan Moore's best rides came in dictating the pace. Mm. He, above all other jockeys, seems to be able to flip the flip the, uh, the track bias on its head. Yeah, well, he's just, just about the best around still, isn't he? Yeah. Fair enough. Um, frustrating day for Frankie as well. Obviously, that would be the yeah frustrating still day for the Frankie. Headlines, won't he, Frankie? But you, you, know, you look at him and say it's a frustrating day for Frankie. But most of the horses he rode didn't have the chances that the market mm. said they did. And when you look at the prices, they finally went off at. I mean, Saga went off at nine to one. It was seven to two overnight. Yeah, and um, they all they all pretty much placed. He he was yeah. a bit unlucky, but yeah, I mean, they, you know, some of them ran well. You know what I mean? But they were just they, they were just ludicrously short price based on what they'd done. So um, I'd say to anybody that's trying to back a Frankie horse, if you're not getting best odds guaranteed with anybody overnight, then wait, because they're underpriced. And yeah. uh, just just leave it until either the bog kicks in or, or you can see what price they go off. OK, there we go. Yeah, frustrating day for Frankie, frustrating day for quite a few people. Not Ryan Moore, of course. Uh, certainly not uh, the boys at uh, Coolmore, uh, Tom, um, who uh, obviously looking for a... Uh, 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 the, the future sires, the future superstar sires, they, uh, they made some bets on Sayuni and Wooten Bassett with some nice horses, you know, St Mark's Basilica for example, and then uh, Paddington and River Tiber today. Uh, I'm going to talk about that first and then you can, you can vent, Tom, because you are the world's premier tipster, um, but you're so far ahead of your time <laughs> that you're tipping Royal Ascot winners sometimes six, maybe 12 months in advance. 
he was frustrated. Oh my God, 25 years I've been doing this and I've never had a more frustrated game. I can say that. We'll go on to that later. But uh, triple time killed me. And mark my words, Manakan is going to turn out to be the best five furlong sprinter in the country. Because every time I tip a horse that's pulled out, they go and I tip triple time in the lock inch, I tip triple time in the guineas, both at 66 to one, never turned up. Didn't have a bean on him today, and he goes and wins at 40 to one. Manakan will be the best sprinter in the country. It just has to be. <laughs> All right, it I'm, just I'm, has I'm to googling. Be. Uh, I'm googling Nunthorpe betting right now, uh, Tom, to see if we <laughs> could see if we can get on. Yeah, because you... I thought that was a, I thought that was a shambles. I thought the time was really rubbish of the rocking stand as well. I thought it turned into a really really bad race. And I think he would. I think he, he, on on his previous. I mean, he, he ran two or three seconds quicker than that last year. Two seconds quicker than that when he won his five furlong sprint. And I don't think, I just think it all fell apart that race. So I think he would have gone really close in that race. But enough of me, yeah, more on the cool ball, boys. You're right. You're right. They, they don't make many mistakes, do they? I mean, I think, I've got to say, it's a lot to do with the men, isn't it? But, uh, but you know, but uh, Sione and Wooden Bassett are clearly, are clearly glowing places. It helps when you've got, you know, 150 Galileo mares there to, to bring them along, but they look very good. River Tiber sort of looked the best horse before, after, and during, and every bit of the race. I know he only scrambled home, but I just think I just think he's probably very good. Uh, and Paddington has just I don't know how Aiden manages to do it. How do you manage to get a horse that good to come fifth on his debut? Beaten about fifty lengths. I don't know how he does it, but he does. But this is, but this is the thing. It's I mean, obviously this year isn't the uh, the same, but it's, it was similar with Charlie Appleby last year. Is that oh what well, he wanted what a handicap, uh, you know? And it's, how, he can't possibly be a Group One horse, but you've got group you've got so many Group One horses that you know yeah. why, why not aim a few at the handicaps, aim a few at the Group Ones that he'll take a bit more time. He's a bit more precocious, and it's I mean again it's easy when you've you've got basically bottomless pockets, isn't it? Well, it helps. Definitely helps, doesn't it? But, you know, it's an amazing progression, that horse, because mm. he looked rubbish. At, I mean, he came to Ascot last year when they were talking about him being a good horse. He was drifted like a barge, came beaten half the track by horses that are nowhere, you know, must be rated 50 pounds below him now. Mm. And he's come out and done what he's done. I mean, it's, he's just, it's, it's an amazing thing he does with these horses. He can, I don't know, they can come back from bad runs like no other trainer in the history of racing. Because yeah. John Gonson's horses don't run like that. Oh, it's actually, I say that, Soul Sister is a pretty good example. But I think there were reasons for that. But most trainers don't come back from horses running as badly as his, August Rodan, Paddington, you know, mm. Snowfall. They go on and on and on. But he's brilliant. Absolutely amazing. And I thought Paddington was the star of the show by a mile. Mm. Today. Well, there's a quick word out. You said about the, uh, the dams. A uh, quick word out for Ream 3, the dam of yeah. triple time, of course. That's now her third Royal Ascot winner after Kate Byron and Ostilio. Ajman Princess was also placed in the, uh, in the Ribblesdale. Um, and he's got Captain Winters uh, entered for Kevin Ryan uh, on Thursday. Um, yeah, so... I mean, that was half the reason I was, I've been following this horse. Uh, it just ne he's just never turned up every time I backed him. Mm. Sort of think, oh, maybe, maybe you're, you're cursing him. But uh, that was half the reason. He's, by, he's the best bred horse, in the, one of the best bred horses in the country. And he's by Frankel out of that mare. There can't be many better than him anywhere in the world to be honest and uh pedigree's out in the end i've always believed that and uh so it proved today frankel one and two in the queen Anne. Eh? yeah fair enough and uh david stevens has stood aside and simon clare is stepping into the uh, the breach david took the the fairly easy uh, job of uh, of getting stuck into day one simon like i said you just got well pretty much five meetings worth of horses in one afternoon tomorrow and and five meetings worth of prize boost i think yeah yes we got a lot of prize boost, boost a lot of runners yeah, Steve has finally handed me uh, today's card. But um, yeah, it was a good, solid, you know, good first outing for bookmakers, really, with the, um, you know, triple times defeat of Inspiral and Brown Selby's high foot success. And, um, you know, backers, followers of Aiden and Brown would have done the double with uh, River Tiber and Paddington. Obviously, Boban in the last was a well back favourite. But I think overall, day one was definitely sort of uh, edged by the bookies. Um, and, we, yeah, we got a few... Uh, We've got a number of specials. I'll do them now, actually. We've got two price boosts, with, which uh, will last for an hour or through till 7.30. Um, max £20 bets. We've got Jumbly, who wins the Duke of Cambridgeshire, uh, 11 to 4 from 9 to 4. That's for the general 9 to 4 chance. We're going 11 to 4 Jumbly uh, for Joseph O'Brien in the 3.40. And then Luxembourg in the Prince of Wales is 9 to 4, nibbled into 2 to 1 in a place. We're going 11 to 4 Luxembourg for the next hour again. And, and, and that's a 4.20. Um, 
And then a couple of other specials to read out. Frankie to ride two or more winners today. He obviously had a strong sorry, tomorrow. He had a strong book today. He didn't have a winner. He's got four good chances uh, tomorrow. Tamaroma at five to one. Prosperous Voyage five to two. Reach for the Moon at tens. Gregory probably his best chance at seven to four. He's three to one from five to two to ride two winners or more. And then the King, King Charles, has two runners tomorrow. Reach for the Moon at tens and Circle of Fire at six to one. We're going four to one. 30 King Charles to have a winner. Day two of Royal Ascot. So there you go. There's Thank you. A few more to come off that as well. Yeah, I think there. I think there is. So brace yourselves for a prize. Get your notebooks and uh, pens out. Uh, get your notebooks and pens out as well for this um, because Simon's got prize boost. And I think he'll also want to be winning this competition. Uh, one of the uh, uh, Simon, you're the biggest Breeders' Cup fan in the business. Well, take a look at this. There you go then, get involved in that competition. While we get involved in day two of Royal Ascot, like I said, please send your selections through on the chat box. And we're starting off with the, the Queen Mary tomorrow. Uh, five furlongs the, the distance for this uh, group two for the juvenile fillies and 28 of them. That's 28 running in this Queen Mary stakes. Beautiful Diamond is seven to two favorite here. Born to Rock is five to one. Relief Rally, seven to one. Gotta Love a Grey is 10 to one. Midnight Affair, 10 to one. Bunchen is 12s with Crimson Advocate. Uh, 14 to one is Balsam. Yeah, and then we've got other interesting horses, uh, including F uh, Flora Bermuda, who's maybe a bit unlucky last time out. Princess Trezara, who's been a bit of a surprise at, uh, at, uh, at Brighton. Uh, and a couple of other uh, interesting winners like Juniper Berries and Out of the Stars uh, as well. Uh, but uh, it's a, a fairly top hobby market here because Beautiful Diamond is a 7-2 to two market leader for Carl Burke and Clifford Lee, who of course took this uh, race last year with the well back dramatised and people uh, may be assuming that uh, this daughter of Twilight Sun is going to do the same thing again this year, uh, usurping Born to Rock, who has been quite well backed over the course of the last few weeks. But uh, normally come to you first for two year old races, Tom. Uh, so the, uh, the Queen Mary stakes, Beautiful Diamonds drawn in 17, Born to Rock's in 12, Relief Rally is in 18. Is that any concern to you, given the way the races are unfolding today, or is it going to be Straight track, fun and games throughout the week at Ascot. Uh, don't know. Don't know, because I think these biases are... Probably isn't a bias, no. but they might be perpetuated by a jockey. So if the jockeys don't think you can win from from that from under the stands rails, they won't they won't go there, will they? They'll all come up the middle. But that's fine, because we saw Anaf run very well in the King's stand. We saw Brad Sell we went up the middle, didn't he? The two two-year-olds went up the middle and were, were just very close to River Tiber. So I'm not worried about the draw. I'm going to forget it completely and concentrate on trying to find the best horse because if you, muck, you know, there's nothing worse than getting getting the draw wrong because immediately you're out, you can't win anyway. Mm. So well, I mean, we better, yeah, I mean, look, it, it better not, I mean, basically you have to go all the way down to what? That's the first... Flora Bermuda, I think, is the shortest price low-drawn horse, so it could be right for an upset. I mean, it could be right for an upset anyway. It's the Queen Mary, isn't it? So um, in terms of RPRs, speed figures, visual impressions, uh, and you're a pedigree man as well for these two-year-olds, what was top of the tree for you? Well, there's two that are top of the tree, and I'm a massive Breeze Up Sales fan. I think they've got a massive advantage. I think that's why our two-year-old, those some of these two-year-olds do massive figures early on, because they are being trained properly, like American horses are, from the work from the get-go and they come into these races miles ahead of where we normally are with horses obviously a horse like river tiber can beat that because he's just better than them but the two horses i like a beautiful diamond and flora of bermuda you mentioned them both they were both cost over 300 i think they both cost over 340 grand at the breeze up sales they were rockets they must have been rockets i'm not a, i'm not one that would know the times of these horses but i would work a bit the fastest ones tend to go i'll be the most expensive ones and they both Blue home in their breeze ups. Beautiful diamond looked awesome. I thought she looked like a three-year-old when she won at Newmarket, uh, Nottingham. Uh, what I liked most about her was the way she hit the line. She hit the line really, really hard at Nottingham. I think she has got the best chance. And if the high draws have a problem, which I don't think they will do, then down the, on the other side of the track is Flora of Bermuda, who I thought should have won the Hillary Needer at Beverly. She cost 340 grand. She's by Dark Angel. Uh, Andrew Balding is just still, I don't know how he manages to get no respect, but he's still got horses running in group races at 25, 33 to 1 when 
when, when he's winning them left, right and centre. So they were my two. I thought they were they were they they, they were on, on what they did in the in the, at the sales. They they had a massive chance. Uh, Born to Rock similar, but I don't, her form hasn't worked out well. And Relief Rally just looks pretty solid. I just don't know how good she is. But my two were Beautiful Diamond and Flora Bermuda on the other side. Okay, Beautiful Diamond seven to two. Then Flora Bermuda uh, is a bigger price. Simon, quick uh, price check on Flora Bermuda, please. Flora Bermuda is currently sixteen to one, but it was bigger. Obviously, it's been well back since. Uh... Went live. Yes, absolutely. For being a friend, you're bowling yeah. uh, the Rodney Dangerfield of, uh, of horse racing, apparently. Uh, he gets no respect. Uh, Paul, uh, Paul Keeley here. Uh, what do you make of this uh, this Queen Mary? <laughs> yeah, like I said, there's, there's I, a lot of fast horses in here. I found it desperately hard. I haven't put anything up in this race. In fact, I haven't put anything up in the Chiba World Race all week so far. Uh, Relief Rally was probably top of my list uh, at the price. I thought she was quite impressive at Salisbury, the way she picked up and... Uh, and was very, very strong at the end. I went to a preview um, evening last week and the talk was that if there's a really good American one, it'll be sign name of Thomas Morley's. I don't know any more than that, but apparently the, that's the one that the Americans think is best okay. on, their, on their speed figures. So that was, that was that, but it's not a big punting race for me. Uh, the next one will be. Okay, uh, sign name then, um, who, um, I mean, is he going to... Is he going to reproduce that Charlie Hall form from a few years ago? <laughs> <laughs> that's, the, that's the question. Uh, but yeah, other ones to, uh, to mention. Goes well at Ascot. Yeah, that's a fair <laughs> point, actually. Yeah, fair point. That is a, uh, is a good point. Yeah, I like the way really for Ali um, uh, uh, finished. There's a slight concern that, uh, you know, she, 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 she might be a little bit of a, a Larry Kodiak, potentially. But mm. you, there's a few horses who hit the line really strongly. Mm. The other one out of that race, though, is Juniper Berries, who they went way too quick at Salisbury. And she chased that pace, and she got she got passed by Relief Rally. And there is a concern, given the stiff finish, that might happen again. But what, I thought she was a bit big. What price is Juniper Berries, Simon? Yeah, Juniper Berries is 33s with us. But actually, looking at the, the market, she has shortened up quite sort of dramatically. I mean, weird. There's, there's other firms with sort of 14s and 11s, and then there's 20s and 22s. So we're stand up 33s. But as I say, it looked like we're still holding it. Oh, OK. Yeah, well... Um... Get on that then, I guess. <laughs> because it's going to be that. It's at least going to be half the price. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, job done. Um, other ones to mention, I think Onagiri as well, I thought was fairly impressive at, uh, at Red Car. Uh, she won quite easily in that race, uh, uh, is, uh, is working out as well. And wouldn't we all like to see Conrad Allen uh, win at Brighton 12 days ago with Princess, Princess Chisara <laughs> and then go and win the Queen Mary? Uh, absolutely dotted up on that occasion. But it's wide open, Simon. You better have some extra places. Yes, we do. We have five places, not three. Thanks for teaming me up for that. And we're also, I, 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 do, I do always have a second look at the American runners in this race. I think of all the two races, this, this race that Wesley Ward, I think, has got the best record in. I haven't studied the other races, but in the last eight years, he's had 11 runners, three winners, three seconds, a fourth and fourth, four unplaced. I've got to say, Bunchen at Face Valley doesn't look the most obvious type. I mean, he's been second in a four and a half final race uh, on debut. But if he, you know, his record says, suggest that. At, a big prize, maybe she's worth each way flutter. Of the three American signing, does look uh, the most likely. Uh, it is our in the no special at you. An American train winner of the Queen Mary is 4 to 1, 130. Um, and of the others, Relief Rally and Beautiful Diamond seems to be the best factor, uh, you know, of, of all of them, really, at the front of the market, as well as Flora and Bermuda since pumped it up. But uh, um, of all of them, I look for Relief Rally was. Or the one that interests me most, but looks phenomenally hard. So I'll probably just chuck some money at Bunchen, given the Wesley Ward record in the Queen Mary. Well, I mean, who doesn't fancy Bunchen, to be fair? Uh, but uh, unfortunately. Tom Brady. She, uh, yeah, fair enough. <laughs> uh, <don't, laughs> I mean, that is, that is timing, that, Tom. See what I did there? See what I did there? It was perfect. If only your tips were. Uh, so perfectly <laughs> timed. Uh, but uh, <laughs> Doc Aswell is a side aid. He's trained by Tom Morley, uh, not the owner of uh, uh, Quinault, uh, but the nephew of uh, David Morley and his wife Maggie Wolfendale, a paddock expert on American TV. Good people would like to wish them the best. He used to work with uh, Jeremy Nacida when he was training all those two year old winners as well by Apple Bowler Caps. Mm, there you go. So they, uh, they certainly know their stuff. Uh, and relief rally for Chris Reed uh, and uh, uh, so far the, uh, the rest. Uh, not a great deal of opening opinions in the Queen Mary, which is no great surprise uh, because it is a red hot race. Uh, but uh, anyway, from the Queen Mary onto a much, much easier race 
Uh, it's the, uh, the Kensington Palace at Phillies handicap. It's a mile handicap with 19 runners, uh, loads of unexposed performers, uh, and of course the uh, the draw uh, is going to be a, a big player in this. Five to one Tamarama. No surprise to see uh, the uh, the horse draw 19 of 19. Uh, in the the mix, given how the the winners, uh, most of them were winning on the round track today, and of course Frankie's in the saddle. Uh, Yuan there is eleven to two. Crystal Caprice is sevens. Adelaide's is eight to one. Tarab is tens. Lady Eros is tens. One morning that uh, was a reserve and does it go. Uh, Indian Wishes at twelve to one, and then there's plenty of others uh, with uh, plenty of others with course form at big prices. Belhaven far too shy. Don't tell Claire Mukadamar all got uh, course form here at uh, Ascot, uh, and last year of course this. I think it was, a, was it 40, 40 to 1 beat 33s uh, at uh, Ascot for this race. So, in theory, it's a tough contest, uh, but uh, the, the favourite Tamarama, no great surprise given Beckett's record with Phillies, Frankie in the saddle, and the, the draw kills. Um, well, it's, it's, Fra it's Frankie's thing, but um, the draw in a, in, a, in a race over a mile, 19. Well, I mean, they were very the wide draws last year, wasn't it? It was seventeen. Yeah, 22 I don't and think 18. It's, I don't think it's normal in a, a mile. That was, that's why they were forty to one. Mm, yeah, right, I mean, yeah, I, I, I'd much prefer to be staying out of trouble. Yeah, okay, yeah, I can outside. see that. But I mean, you know, as I said, Frankie, Frankie horses are just underpriced, so that will go off bigger to my guarantee. Uh, so we don't bet that. I've made a, I've made a habit over the years, especially recently and this week, of get backing horses. And getting really good prices, and they go off a lot shorter, and then run terribly. So if you want to mark a couple down here, the two are Yuan there and Adelaide, both trained by Joseph O'Brien, both laid out for the both both laid out for the race. Uh, Yuan there ran seventh last time out, lost a run beaten record in listed company. But if you watch the race, she was just trapped on the rail all the way. She finished on the bridle. He, he never he was never able to ride her. She only got a bit four lengths. She was up the back of two horses rated 103 and 109. Uh, I think she probably would have gone close, in which case she'd be carrying £10 more if she was running in this. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, she can get in trouble again. Like, you know, it was a much smaller field that she managed to get into trouble there, but I, I guarantee you she's at least £10 better than the mark. Uh, and Adelaide was a little bit unlucky, th um, third of 20 in a car handicap last time, uh, where it was sort of a um, middle to far side, had to pull wide out to the left to make a challenge, only got beat half a length. Uh, and was, you know, has obviously been extremely well back because she was 20 yesterday in the early rounds, and she's a top price eight now. Um, of the two, I just fancy you one there, but I have backed them both, and I, and I think Coral's 11 to 2 is still fair enough. Uh, but, you know, it's a bit, bit of luck in running, probably a bit mad uh, going too heavy on a round course mile with 19 runners, but I think both of these two horses are potentially well ahead of their marks. Okay. Um, hopefully James McDonald will get a little bit uh, better look than he did uh, today uh, aboard your one there. Uh, the other one uh, that we haven't really mentioned at single figures is the one I quite like the look of, uh, Tom, in the shape of Crystal Caprice. Again, talking about uh, pedigrees, um, she's by Frankel, the, uh, the dam was uh, you know, 105 uh, uh, rated uh, uh, mare, Sir Michael Stout, Ryan Moore, wide draw, um, won both its handicaps, including here at Ascot, and drops in trip as well. I started to look at Crystal Caprice and I thought, geez, she could be better than this lot. Yeah, it could be. Uh, uh, it's a good job Keels and I uh, don't have to don't uh, aren't sitting by each other because we. I, I found this race completely double dutch. I hate this race. What is this doing on the Ascot thing? <laughs> Round the bend, twenty fillies. What a nightmare! Absolutely impossible, as we saw last year. I hope he's right. I hope Joanne there wins or, or one of uh, Joseph wins for him. But I think it's double dutch. I cannot believe people bet in races like this. I think they're impossible. <laughs> There's going to be so much trouble in running. It's just all about luck. If you get the luck, you've got a chance. If you don't, forget it. Kiss, uh, as you said, uh, Frankel, the Frankel filly from Stall 20, I like you. I like wide draws. Just simply because I know I'm going to, in, in a race like this, stuck on the rail, you've got no chance. You can't expect to get a horse with no name run like William Buick did uh, today in, in this side of race. So if you get behind, what happens is they go too fast and the ones in front fall back into you and you can't get out. So that's why the winners come up the outside. So maybe you can still caprice, but you know it's not a race for me. I didn't even look at it. Yeah, fair enough. Okay, that's that. Uh, that's a, a fork putting that one, isn't it? Uh, but uh, this is why you're both on the show, because if you were both absolutely mad keen on twenty runner handicaps and, and didn't give a, a monkey's about the others, then it, it wouldn't be balanced, would it? So we've got the we've got the balance. Like I said, the punter and the purist. Uh, that's what we've uh, we've got. 
Uh, but uh, I quite like races like this mainly because of what Tom just said, Simon, is that I look at this race and I think, right, I can put a line through half of them because the last thing I want to be doing is backing anything drawn low who's going to get smashed up on the rail. I'd rather be... We saw horses today, didn't we? Royal Champion went three wide around the bend. Calling the Wind went three round the, wide around the bend, ran a, a really big race. You know, Pannington was off the rail as well. Yeah, I, I think there's quite a few horses at big prices at, at uh, double-figure draws here, Mr. Uh, Mr. Clare. Yeah, there's something, uh, it's funny, yeah, yeah, common sense says this race looks incredibly tough and not to get involved, and yet yeah, actually there's something quite sort of, I don't know, deductive about them, that you want to give it a crack, particularly I suppose if you know, you're having a bet in every race. And, um, you know, there's, there's been quite a lot of money for this year, and there, in fact, there's also been a lot of money for Adelaide, the two Joseph O'Brien horses are in the no special, is Joseph O'Brien uh, to win this race, uh, he, it's three to one from five to two, he's got the three chances, you and there. At 11 2, we're top price that. Adelaide's 8 1, we're top price that. And Indian Wish, 12 to 1, we're bottom price that. And so, um, yeah, those are the three chances for this run. That's in their special five places, not four uh, to pass on. Um, and Jim Crowley rides Book Dharma. It's, his, it's uh, her first time in handicap company. And he's actually quite encouraging, given it's the 16 to 1 chance with us. You can get bigger elsewhere. And um, not obvious at first glance, but first time in a handicap. Working work well at home, apparently. They put cheap pieces on, uh, and she's got form at the track. And so he's expecting a good run, although she's drawn three, Ross. So mm. she's off your list, presumably. Yeah, I mean, I, also, with, with, with Jim's had a couple of nightmares on this round track in the past. I mean, not, not for his fault, but obviously drawn one, two, or three and, and, and nearly getting smashed at the rail. We saw Cadillac and Sarah today in the Wolverton. Yeah, it's just um, the form's good, but it ain't for me, Simon. I, um, life's too short mm. to be back in horses mm. drawn low. On the uh, the round track, did you did you fancy one before we move on? Yeah, listen, I thought I, I agree with you. I thought Crystal Capri is going back. I think going back in trip to a mile, obviously course form. I thought there, uh, and with Ryan Moore on board, riding brilliantly, drawn twenty. I probably yeah. Listen, I always have a bet on Jim's when he's reasonably encouraging about them. So I'll have one drawn low with Mukadama. I'm a back Crystal Capri drawn wide uh, for Ryan. Moore. There we go. Yeah, one from uh, one from the inside, one from the outside. Uh, as for uh, people at uh, at home, uh, a couple of uh, mixed messages. Some people saying, "Yeah, absolute pinstickers race," uh, and some people quite uh, disagreeing. Uh, Disney account is going with Mukadamar as well at uh, at twenty five to one. But uh, Paul, what did you uh, what did you have on the list? Yeah, I'll back to uh, back the two Joseph O'Brien ones: uh, Yuan there and Adelaide. Okay, lovely stuff. Right, and uh, I'm not going to uh, ask Tom to repeat uh, his thoughts on the race. <laughs> uh, moving on to the uh, 340. If you are watching live, by the way, um, or if you're watching at home uh, in, the, in the morning or in the middle of the night, maybe you can't sleep. It could be 4 a.m. Who knows? Uh, but uh, please like uh, uh, the, uh, the stream as well uh, because, uh, of course, we live in a world that is dominated by algorithms. Uh, and uh, if we don't feed the YouTube beast, then where would we be, quite frankly? Uh, but uh, let's move on to the Duke of Cambridge stakes, the uh, 340 tomorrow group two contest over the straight mile at uh, 10 of them uh, lining up. And uh, Joseph O'Brien, uh, hopefully, if, uh, if Kiels is correct, will have uh, won the 305 and will be going on with a big chance here in the shape of Jumbly at 9 to 4. Prosperous Voyage is 5 to 2. Uh, Grand Dam 11 to 2. Queen Aminato is 10 to 1. Honey Girl 11s. Rogue Millennium 11s. Potter Pova 16 to 1. International Angel is 20 to 1. Uh, and uh, you've also got uh, uh, Random Harvest and Lightship. Uh, in there as well. Who, to be fair, both got squeaks on their best pieces of form, especially Random Harvest, who's got a cracking record at the track for, uh, for Ed Walker and Safi Osborne. Uh, but uh, Tom, a little bit of a another one of those races that, again, maybe it's maybe it's connections that have got something to do with it. I guess Jumbly does have Ascot form from uh, from July last year, but. I wasn't necessarily expecting the market to look like this when the, uh, the entries came through a few days ago. Jumbly is pretty solid at 9-4 to four at the top of the bedding. What did you think? Yeah, I mean, I've, I admit to, I backed Jumbly when she was 10 or 12-1 to one about two weeks ago because I thought she ran a, really, a race full of promise when she was sort of trapped out wide in the race at the Curra last time. But I, have to, I, I agree. I mean, 9-4 is way too short for me on form. I think the, the, the top two in the market are, I don't know if this is a word, take on a ball? Is that a word? Uh, <laughs> it could be two words. I, quite, I like it. It works. <laughs> I thought I could take both of them on, and I thought the next two in were the two interesting ones, really. I would give a shout to International Angel, but I, I'd like her over seven furlongs rather than a mile. But I thought the two, Grand Dam and Queen Annie Martu, were really interesting. I ended up on Grand Dam, but looking at the prices now, I probably wish I was on Queen Annie Martu, because I think... She shouldn't be half the price of Queen Animato. I just like Grand Dam. I think 
I thought she was. She won on her debut last year in Spiral K. It was in Philly for Gosden's today that came out after a break and ran well. She was placed in group in a Group One, the Sun Chariot. Uh, I think she's a hold-up horse. I think they're riding her too prominently. I like the fact that Spencer's on. Queen Animatu, though, is, is a very big price. Uh, she's not from six or seven on the turf, but she's got a very good uh, all-weather record. And I'm not sure that she ran very well at Ascot anyway, so I don't think that's an issue. And I was surprised how short she was when she ran at li- in the listed race behind Sacred at the start of the season. She's about three to one, seven to two, something like that. And Sacred and Sandrine would be at least as good as these, I think. Uh, and uh, I, th- I think she'll run well. I think Amal will suit her. So they would be my two, uh, Grand Dam and Queen Animatu against the, two at the top of the market. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Queen Animatu is actually quietly one of my strongest fancies of the week, I think. Uh, she's been, like you said, she's, she isn't, uh, she hasn't won on the turf yet, uh, but you can make excuses pretty much for every run. And that run behind Soft Whisper last year, she got caught in a pocket at a crucial point and she absolutely ate up the ground late on. She is that kind of horse. You, you just don't need to, to, I don't think you make, need to make excuses for her uh, on turf anyway, because obviously she started her career on the all-weather uh, yeah. when she won a couple of minor races. And then throughout last summer, she did nothing but improve on, on turf. Mm. And that Ascot run was by some margin her best ever run of the life at the time. And then, of course, she went back on. Uh, into the autumn and beyond on the all weather and improved again. So I do think she's an, an improved horse, isn't she? And Lingfield yeah. last time was just, that was just way too sharp for her, wasn't it? But it was a huge run against yeah, two genuine a, yeah, group class. Yeah, it was, a, it, 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 was, it, it was a massive run. But, yeah. you know, she'd have got a hell of a lot closer at a mile. Yeah. You know what I mean? And, uh, yeah, I, yeah I, do think she's, I, I do think she's got a big prize. The same as Tom, I, I, I wanted to take on the front too. Jumbly just to, on, on priced grounds. Uh, prosperous voyage on the grounds that she ran an absolute shocker last year here. So it was the only really bad race she ran, uh, and you know I'd just like I'd like to see him do it again at Ascot before I start getting involved at a short price. I think she made a little bit of a meal out of winning at Epsom last time in a race. She should have won more easily as well. Yeah, and it's, I thought it set up quite nicely for us. Well. Yeah. I, I almost at the prices I would almost rather back Random Harvest out of that mm. race at twenty twenty five to yeah. one than, than than her at five to two. Yeah, so I wanted to take them on and Grand Dam and. Queen Aminatu with the two, and I came down on Queen Aminatu. Yeah, I think she's mm-hmm. got a cracking, t- cracking chance. William Haggis in this race as well, of course. He uh, he likes to uh, to target. So I think quite well uh, with Bashkarova, but uh, Queen Aminatu reminds me a little bit of Move Swiftly, who won this uh, in 2019 for the uh, for the yard as well. So um, she was also a, a horse who'd really improved on the all weather. And yeah, I thought I think Queen Aminatu ten to one each way. I think is possibly one of the each way bets of the week, Simon. So. We know exactly where she's finishing. <laughs> yes, four. four. <laughs> no absolutely four, on this race. guaranteed. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, she, I mean, we're, stat, we're top rows 10 to 1, it's sort of 9 to 1, and 8.5 to 1 um, elsewhere, a bit of 10s elsewhere. Um, they are the two being back, Grand Dam, Queen Animata, obviously both guys tipping them up, all that uh, um, a, a catalyst for that. Um, Jumbly, solid, sort of 9 to 4, Prosperous Voyage, 5 to 2. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm asked, I thought Grand Dam was. Most of she's very unexposed, only the six starts, finished ahead of Possible Voyage in the, the Sun Chariot. Um, you know, at around that sort of six to one mark, looked solid. I've got a couple of, well, a few in the no specials here. We've got one which is uh, from the last race into this race. Joseph O'Brien to win both uh, the previous race, the Duke of Cambridge, um, sorry, the uh, Kensington, Kensington Palace Stakes, whatever it is, and this, this race, Duke of Cambridge. He's also got three runners in the previous race, he's got the two here. Jumbly and Honey Girl. That's 10 to 1 from 8 to 1. Then these complicated ones, which some people may work out, are really good value. Um, 11 to 4, 9 to 4, Jumbly or Prosperous Voyage to win by over one and a half lengths. And 3 to 1 of the, uh, the, you know, the uh, exacta, uh, Jumbly and Prosperous Voyage in either order. First, second, 3 to 1, 5 to 2. So they're the in the nose specials. Uh, but yeah, grand dam for me. Okay, yeah. I think I'm just going to stick to the each way rather than trying to work out whether there's price boosts or a, <laughs> a value. Uh, and again, I'm not going to ask Tommy's opinions on those price boosts <laughs> because we do have several other races to get through. Uh, but I think we're all generally agreed that the Ascot former Grand Dam and Queen Amanatu looks like it might well give the front to a bit of a... Yeah, I think, I, I, I think one of those two, or maybe both of them, will be up there against, against the two jollies, yeah. Yeah, now, both from your yards who've got good records in this race as well, Tom. Yeah, those were my two. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I tipped Grand Dam in the paper, but if you'd have told me that they were going to be 5-1 to one and 10-1, to one, I would have been on the, I would have been the other way around. Yeah, but of course, as we keep discussing, Tom, that is partly you that does this. So, <laughs> That's um, right. If you, if you tip Queen Amanatu, Grand Dam would be 10-1. So. Oh, exactly. 
is the way it goes. Uh, but uh, as for, for opinions on the, uh, the chat, uh, Offwell says Paul Race Jumbly probably takes it. Uh, and uh, as for the, uh, the rest, uh, Prosperous Boys was given a peach of a ride at Epsom, class above these. Hope she's ridden more prominently tomorrow. Uh, that's the, uh, the Duke of Cambridge stakes then. We're on to the. Uh, the... Trust, it? What's that? that? Doesn't make sense. How could he... He was given a peach of a ride, and yet has to be ridden more prominently tomorrow. It sounds like he wasn't happy with the ride last time, but it was a peach. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense, that? Yeah, um, I guess it means, what do you mean by peach of a ride? Is it that you, you know, you got her up when she she shouldn't have won? Is that a peach of a ride? Or timing it to perfection? Is that a peach of a ride? What What's a peach of a ride? Who knows? Well, well it ends up lining your pockets, I think. You'll find yeah, that, is, that is true, <laughs> yeah. That is true. Uh, but uh, do let us know, what is the definition of a peach of a ride, but uh, Prince of Wales Stakes uh, is uh, is coming up. I think racing needs new cliches, doesn't it? We should come up with some some. We should mix it up, be a bit more creative, but maybe not right now uh, because we've got the feature race <laughs> on day two of Royal Ascot, and it's a, a cracking renewal. The Prince of uh, Prince of Wales Stakes, Luxembourg ninety four, Abbey or eleven to four, uh, Baybridge is one hundred and thirty, My Prospero is one hundred and thirty, Mosterdaff is rated on the heels of these, uh, and is a twenty to one shot, and Classic Causeway is the hundred to one outsider of the bunch and uh, again it's going to be tactical uh, uh, it's uh, it's going to be um, full of potentially uh, frustrating performances because I'd say every single horse certainly the first four in the, the betting maybe even Mossadef as well I would say every single person on this panel has at some point backed a horse in here and really fancied it and it's let them down kills. Yeah absolutely I mean I don't know how you can form a really really strong position but opinion in this race because you know there's that little between them there's one pound between the top four on racing post ratings uh, and two pound back to master staff and there's two pound between all five of them on official ratings that's how that's how close their match on their best pieces of form and somebody's got to come first and somebody's got to come fifth mm -hmm. you know or fourth yeah fifth sorry or maybe even worse if the american one runs a race of, of, of any sort so uh you know a couple of them unless they finish all in a line which is, I suppose, is plausible. Yeah. It'll be a great race if it happens. Uh, then something's going to run a, run below form. Now, I suppose we've got every chance of Luxembourg making the run in, and one more trying to do that. I think you'd be fairly surprised if he didn't, given yeah. how he's been riding the round track. Yeah, exactly. So you have to give him that, you know, if they're going to let him have that, um, then you've got you to give him serious respect. I've always liked a day um, he's the one I'm going to come down on, but for no other reason than I've always liked him. You know what I mean? And, mm. and you know, it's, it's their absolute aim this year to try and win a one mile two furlong race with him. Mm. Um, but he is more of a stayer than a one mile two furlong horse. And if it becomes really tactical, then that's probably against him. Yeah. Uh, but I, I do love the way he goes goes through his races. I love the way he won last time. And you know, if I if I was going to have a bet, and I'm not a hundred percent certain to, it would be him. Yeah. And Anne Mark's frank the form. Highland Avenue ran well today. Regal Reality's frank the form as well. Uh, but is there, is there a, there's been Charlie Appleby whisperings that is it just because they're slightly we've said this we said this just really, before his Epson, strike rate was ridiculously high yeah. early in the season and I think he just paid for that and it's come down. But he's six for twenty in the last fortnight now. That's thirty percent. So he's yeah. back up to uh, you know at least what you'd expect. So so it's just yeah. regression to the mean basically. Yeah, basically. Yeah. Okay, uh, the Prince of Wales stakes then Luxembourg nine to four again. Um, obviously, I mean, Adiar is his keel's a soft spot in this. Uh, Baybridge has been mine since he was uh, a, a three-year-old winner novice at Newcastle in spectacular fashion. What's uh, what's your soft spot in this race, Tom? It's not Luxembourg. Uh, I think I agree with Keels that uh, he might get the run of the race. I just I've just never warmed to him really. Uh, don't know why. Uh, I'm not a great fan of Camelot. Probably that's why. But uh, he sticks his head in the air. And, but he's, he's very good. He's very good. Uh, he could easily make the running. I am worried about Charlie Appleby's form. I am. I think I thought those two in the... Uh, I think it's his older horses rather than his young, unexposed mm. horses. I thought those two in the Queen Anne ran shockers today. I don't think that was anything like modern games' form. You can see it from all those horses he's beaten before he didn't beat this time. I know he wasn't great. You know, he's not a, a, a superstar miner, but he should have... I thought he should have got past light infantry, really, really the way the race went, and he couldn't do that. And Native Trail was horrible, so I am worried about his old, his, his, old, his older horses' form. Uh, Baybridge will have enjoyed the little bit of rain that fell last night. I think he'll go really well, like Sasco, but I like my Prospero. I think of of the four, I just thought stepping up in trip. I think I think he ran as well as could be expected back over mile last time. He's just a very solid, good staying horse, and I think it might be his day tomorrow. I think conditions will be perfect for him. But you could, as Keel said, there's nothing between them. All four could win, and whoever's 
whoever gets the run of the race and is in the peak of their form will be that one. I'm hoping it's my Prospero. Okay, my Prospero 130. And like I said, I don't think he's going to win, but Mostad have done, you know, run to 1-2-2 two, two, twice in the past 12 months, and that's not far off the level one that you'd uh, that you'd need to run to to win this race, is it? So, um, it's yeah, it's certainly what? a... So well, should we go to our Jim Crowley correspondent to find out the, <laughs> the latest on I think, Osterdat? I think it's I think it's probably fair. Simon, have you have you had the the inside track? And by that I mean read Jim's blog. <laughs> yes, yes. No, to be fair, Dave Stevens actually did did speak to Jim, so I am just quoting off the blog. But um, you know, he said he's run well in the last two world meetings, finished a good second at Broome in last year's Hardwick, uh, finished fourth in the Shima Classic, back to ten films here, and I think that'll suit him. Uh, you know, a fast run up mile and a half just fed for salmon. So um, he's hopeful that he can run a big race. He's not saying he can win, though. It's probably quite sensible. Um, but, uh, you know, he's a big price. He's 20 to 1. So I suppose, you know, he finished third or fourth. That would be a, a big run. It's a great race, isn't it? I mean, I, in a way, I think, look, given the way Aidan and Brian's horses ran today, Ryan Moore riding, I suppose, beat Baybridge last time. I tried to watch and thought, was Baybridge a bit unlucky? But, you know, he got out got out of that pocket early enough and just couldn't catch him. And then Baybridge, as they are, and my Prospero, the one, two, three, and that was different sort of ground in the Champions Stakes. Uh, and Luxembourg, you know, after winning that race at the first of maturity two years ago, was going to be last year's big three-year-old for the O'Briens. It didn't quite work out, placed the guineas. He did end up winning the Irish Champion, running well in the arc, and this could be a big year for him. So I think he, you know, given there's not a lot between them, and I just think maybe the obvious players... Follow up Brian at Royal Ascot with Ryan Moore, but uh, that's probably quite simplistic. Uh, the end of those specials, 11 to 4 from 9 to 4 Luxembourg, uh, or a Dyer to win by over one and a half lengths. We get both of them, but running few, but they've got to win by over one and a half lengths. And then also 11 to 4 um, Luxembourg and a Dyer to finish first and second in either order from 9 to 4. Okay. Uh, quite a few price boosts then for the Prince of Wales, as for uh, everyone at, uh, on the, the chat box. Um, quite a lot of people um, uh, not keen on the Appleby horses uh, either. Uh, but uh, Offworld says two risky bagging, backing Haggis horses as well. Uh, well, Sean Gurney thinks my Prospero uh, wins easy. Uh, so, as ever, uh, they say it's a game of opinions. And uh, certainly at Royal Ascot, where everyone uh, disagrees and argues in the chat box. It is kicking off, uh, quite frankly, right now. But uh, we are uh, moving <laughs> on. We've got three more races to go uh, for, uh, for day two of, uh, of Royal Ascot. Uh, and we're on to the Royal Hunt Cup here, which uh, when I was going through the card earlier on, uh, got to the point about halfway down this race. And I think my frontal lobe exploded. Uh, it is a cracking renewal. There's 30 runners. We've got so many well-handicapped horses, so many Ascot horses, so many unlucky horses as well. Uh, but uh, Perotto has been well punted over the past uh, week or so, and he's seven to one clear favourite. Uh, Intelligent is fifteen to two. Was an eye catcher last time out. Astro King is eight to one. Was an eye catcher last time out. Uh, Garley is nine to one. Never mind Charlie Appleby with the older horses. It's Saeed Bin Saroru uh, knocks out the the winners for the uh, the five year old and up brigade for uh, for Godolphin. Uh, he's nine to one. Reach for the Moon Tens chasing Aphrodite is twelves with Blue for you and fourteen to one and bigger the rest. And uh, I'm going to turn to my left because. Uh, there's quite a few reasons why Perotto has been well punted over the past week, but one of them has got to be you, mate. Uh, yeah, I put him up in a weekend. At, uh, well, I backed up at 14, just put him up in a weekend. Uh, he, I've had him on my mind since he finished seventh in the Victoria Cup last time. Uh, he won the Britannia um, two years ago mm -hmm. off a mark of 99, and he ended the season rated 110. And, uh, and, you know, he was a really good progressive horse, but he had to spend most of his time running in small field conditions races, and, uh, and which, you know, don't really suit a horse that, you know, came from, he came from virtually last to first to win the Britannia, loves being held up off a strong gallop. Uh, you know, but he still had some really good races, including only getting beaten three quarters left by my Oberon and Modern News, a uh, pair of rated 113, 111 at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, and that was in like a three runner, three or four runner race at Windsor. Uh, and. Uh, Anyway, he lost his form a little bit later in, his, uh, later in the season, started to drop down the handicap. But he switched to Roger Varian, and I thought he, I thought he, he ran an absolute blinder because he doesn't want soft ground, and seven furlong isn't fast enough. And he'd be hit the line hard. Uh, he was beating a fair way, but but by the same token, uh, uh, he wasn't in the, he wasn't in the right place. And I think he is this time. 
He's down to a mark of just 96. He yeah. gets to, you know, that's a stone lower than he started last season. Because, I mean, he is a group horse, isn't he? Yeah, he? yeah, yeah he's, he's definitely a borderline group horse, yeah. yeah. And he's a borderline group horse, running off 96. Uh, if Roger Varian had got him back to his best, and I think that was a good sign, then, you know, I just think he'll win whatever side he's on. There could be three groups. Uh, he's on the he's on the stand side. Most of the pace does seem to be on the high side. Okay. So I'm hoping he'll be in the right place. And you know I've been ridiculously keen on him for ages. Which the more I think about it, when you've got 30 runners, the more stupid that is. But I mean, I, you know, I do like him, and you know, I've got no interest in backing anything else. Yeah, fair enough. I mean, that's it's, it's good, isn't it? Because sometimes you do. I went through this race and sort of turned, like I said, turned my brain to jam. So it's there's some handicaps where you just look at it and almost, it almost jumps out to you the obvious one. Well, I'm backing that. That's it, that's good. Uh, but then I watched the replay back and he did run a big race, didn't he? And Roger Varian, of course, Royal Champion, Charion, Postaleo, all around yeah, big races they're today. They're running well, aren't they? They are. They are running big, uh, big races. So uh, Perotto, 7 to 1 favourite then uh, for, uh, for Paul Keeley here. Uh, Tom, are you on the uh, looked at it and knew what I was going to back, or are you on the looked at it and thought about spreading your brain on toast afterwards? Uh, uh, in the middle. In Fair the middle. Uh, I'm not. As you probably well know, I'm not a pace or draw man. I think the pace is the biggest misnomer in racing. I think people talk about it, and then as soon as they, it wins on the other side, they never they never mention when they're wrong, when the pace is wrong. If the ground's faster up the middle on the far side, don't matter how fast you go on the near side, you won't win. So uh, for me, it's all about where the where the best ground is, not necessarily where the best pace is. I don't know where that is. Could be anywhere. Could easily be high, but I'm not worried about any draw in this race. Uh, I think. Earlier in this season, we had the Victoria Cup where people were telling me that he couldn't win from low, hadn't won from low for 20 odd years or whatever. Robert Rebel Territory wins up the middle. So I'm not, I don't think there'll be a massive advantage wherever you are. I'm hoping that they would win up the far side for a change because I think you get better value because I think everyone else thinks that it's going to be the near side. I did like Garley quite a lot because I think the form of his new market win last year had, couldn't have worked out better. I think every single horse that's run in the race since has won. Uh, the, the second King of Conquest is now rated £24 higher than when Garley beat him pretty easily. Uh, Saeed Bin Saror is just mustard in these races. Mm -hmm. Real world, Bedouin's choice in the Cambridgeshire. I, he, clearly, this has been the plan. He's kept him off the track for it. So if stall eight's OK, I think he's got a massive chance. I know he's a group horse. I don't, I don't have to think he's a group horse. And what he did at, at Newmarket, he is a group horse. He beat Blue for You pretty comfortably at... York the time before Blue for You came out and won the big handicap. I think he'll go well as well, Blue for You, if he, if he gets home. Slightly worried that whether the, the stiff mile will be too much for him. Uh, but I get all the arguments for Perotto. Clearly, he's well handicapped on his best form. <coughs> I don't want to back him at 7 to 1 if that's the wrong place to be. Uh, and also, he hasn't won. He hasn't won since uh, the, the Britannia. But look, he's, he's handicapped now to win and can easily win. I like Garley, and the other one, it's just because he's my cliff horse, and I would kill myself if I didn't back him at 40 to 1 or 50 to 1, was the one that got in right at the end, dual identity. Because he won the Cambridgeshire last year on his side by about three or four lengths. I think the drop back to a mile on a straight, fast run, straight track will suit him perfectly. And also, I think William Knight is now in good form when he wasn't in good form at any stage this season, but they started running well. So my two against the field were Garley and dual identity they're drawn low I could easily have it wrong I don't I don't do draws or pace I don't I don't I think I get them wrong more than I get them right so I don't even want to look at them uh, and if low numbers have a chance then they would be my then then I think they'll 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 be competitive from their far side okay there we go uh, a couple of opinions then in the at the Royal Hunt Cup uh, although uh, like I said it did turn my brain to to jam but the one horse who um, I kept kind of coming back to was atrium with the cheap pieces on as well handicapped and is another Ascot horse as well, uh, but uh, quite a few opinions there, Simon. And also breaking news: just hearing that uh, Frankie Dettori's got a nine-day ban, so uh, he won't be riding the Coral Eclipse uh, if that uh, if that comes into effect at the uh, the right time, uh, Simon. Oh yeah, thanks for delivering good news for our boss. Yes. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. The man of the moan on his farewell tour. The only race he's not going to have a chance to, uh, to to win is our Coral Emily Eclipse. Up, We've got all the What's that, Tom? Emily Upjohn. Emily Upjohn. Right yeah. he's, booked, he's booked to ride the favourite, and we've been, you know, we were preparing lots of content and getting videos of all his previous wins in the race. You know, like Dale Army and Enable and Gold North. So yeah, 
Cheers, Ross. I'm blaming you. I mean, um, it's, it's not my fault. He, he got banned for putting the horse eye back through the rail, so it's just... <laughs> Shows bad. him right, then. He does shoot. <laughs> you Absolutely. always shoot the messenger. You always shoot the messenger. Yeah, that's that true. Well, yeah, but I'm um, the presenter, so I'm always the messenger. I'll be riddled with bullet holes oh, after this. Oh, well, that's the Deary price me. you pay for taking that job. Um, <laughs> I'll be like Sean Bean. <laughs> just just everything, every time I turn up, I end up dying at the end. Anyway. Anyway, sorry, so we're going to the, uh, the Hunt Cup. <laughs> yeah, six places, not four in the Royal Hunt Cup. Uh, no in the no specials. We, we knew them all up on the previous races. Uh, I must admit, I liked Garling. I'm looking at only 10 lifetime starts for the seven year old. Um, he's lost eight runs. He's been four in three seconds, one four. Uh, so I've been sure, obviously, good in these big big handicaps. Thought he was had a good chance. Uh, Waniz, uh, Trevor Charlie Hills, he's won it twice in the last four years, Charlie. Once with a Shadwell horse ridden by Jim Crowley, although Jim isn't super confident. He said they got the blinkers on, and hopefully on this straight mile, that might sharpen him up and give him an each way chance. I wouldn't say he was bullish. He was certainly more encouraging about Mukadama uh, in the earlier race, Kensington Palace. So, uh, yeah, hellishly difficult. Um, so, yeah, I'll leave that one to you. I'll have Garley and one ease each way and a blind loss to Jim Crowley. Okay, fair enough. You can mute yourself now, Simon, and, uh, and, and, and get all those expletives out. <laughs> <laughs> As I know you, uh, I'm a PR I you. man. I'll, I'll keep, I'll keep the inner, the rage inside me. Yeah, that's fine. To be fair, Sam, you, 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 you're undoubtedly the most positive man uh, in uh, in racing broadcasting, and that's the first time I've seen you genuinely, genuinely <laughs> frustrated. I was, I was a bit worried then. Mm. I thought he was going to get in. I thought he was going to get in the car and come down and lamp me then. But uh, anyway, <laughs> Royal Hunt Cup, Gills. Royal Hunt Cup. Porto first. The rest nowhere. Okay, there you go. That's what we're hoping for, Tom. <laughs> Uh, Garley, although I am worried just to read uh, if you didn't know that Morge was out of the coronation states because she's coughing, uh, whether Side Vincent Roy has a problem with his yard, because I think if one horse is coughing, probably a few are, but that would be my worry for him. But I like him, and the other one is dual identity. Okay, lovely stuff. And Simon? Yeah, Garley and Wanese. Okay, and uh, an atrium for me. Uh, very small stakes. Last two races at, uh, at Royal Ascot on day two then, uh, and it's the Queen's Vars here at the uh, three-year-old contest at Group 2, over a mile and six. You need to stay very strongly indeed to win this, uh, and if you do, you're pretty much guaranteed a, a decent career uh, in staying group races. Gregory is seven to four. It's been a while since we've seen such a, a short price favourite in this, but it might, again, have something to do with the jockey. Uh, chess piece is five to one. Circle of Fire, six to one. Peking Opera, 13 to two. St George is nine to one. St Vincent's Garden is ten to one. And 18 to one and bigger the rest. Uh, Tom, short price, Gregory. Really impressive for Goodwood last time out. That one obviously comes from a, a very strong family. Again, if you're on the breeding side of it, uh, he is bred to win a race like this. Uh, but the Gosden and the Tory factors probably taking a, a few... Uh, a few bits off the price. Yeah, and I mean, that's exactly it. I'm a big fan of the horse. I uh, thought he might easily make up into a St. Ledger horse, but he's got a bit, you know, he's got to do it. Uh, I'm not sure the race at Goodwood was that good, and he should be three to one, not seven to four, shouldn't he? Maybe even bigger and on, on form. And so, therefore, you know, he's another one of these Frankie horses he's just got to take on. If Frankie wins a race this week, I'm going to lose because they're all too short, and I'm sure Keels will be the same. So, uh, so uh, for me, I got to take on Gregory. I was interested in Circle of Fire uh, because I thought he was a big eye catcher in the Lingfield Derby trial. I know that race hasn't worked out that well, but I think at the time it looked a good race. He got caught out the back and sort of stayed on strongly. Uh, the fact that Michael Stout runs him here over a mile and six rather than the King Edward was a bit of a surprise to me because I thought he was perfect for the King Edward and he's by Almond Zor and I don't think there's, been, you know, slightly concerned whether he'll get the trip. So in the end, I had I sort of came down on the side of the two handicap winners. Uh, St. George was one of them, who I thought uh, looked good at Doncaster last time and uh, should stay the trip. But I don't think that form was as good as the chess piece form at York, where he stayed on really strong his top weight. Time was very good. He won by a couple of lengths, uh, being subsequently switched to the Godolphin colours. I don't know if he was in... He was owned by the Rabber organisation before, so he's probably part of it, organised anyway. But he's now running in the Godolphin colours. I think he's got plenty of upside. By Nathaniel, he'll stay the trip, and I just thought he was going to run really well. But once again, I've sort of spoilt it for everyone there because he was about an eight or nine to one earlier in, earlier in the day. And you know, if you'd swap that, if you'd have told me he was going to be shorter than Circle of Fire on form, I'd be surprised at this stage. But nonetheless, I think Circle Chess Piece is more likely to stay, and therefore I'd be with him for the Crisfords. Hmm. Who could have a uh... 
a good week. Um, poker face, obviously defeated, but uh, is their last three winners before that all won. Uh, what did you make of the Queen's Fast? Keel's not your type of race? Uh, not massively my type of race, but I was well impressed with um, Gregory. I, I think you know you could make an argument and say he is around about the right price. He's got an official mark of 110, uh, and then the next best is 102. I mean, to be fair, uh, he did he's do only all... done it in two. He's only done it in two races. Yeah, and that Goodwood win RPRs would have won nine of the last ten Queen's Vases, I guess. So. Yeah, exactly. And you know that was a mile and three. He's done one the Park Hill. Um, you know, over a mile six and a half, he's going to stay. Mm. Um, the only question is whether, because he was all over the place at Goodwood as well, wasn't he? In the straight, he was very green still. Uh, and you know, if 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 he's grown up a little bit from that, then he's, I think he sets a fairly decent standard. Uh, the only question is how streetwise he is, because obviously there's 14 runners here, he's going to be running around the bend, and if he gets unbalanced and something bumps into him, etc. Uh, but it, it's not good with Ascot, is it? I mean, only he's got a bend to come around. Like, you know, I mean, so, so I think he's the horse to beat. I couldn't find much enthusiasm for backing anything against him, to be honest. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, Simon, um, uh, give us a quick opinion on the Queen's Vars before we wrap it up with the Windsor Castle. Yeah, I think, I think Gregory is very solid for all the reasons Paul just said. You know, he's well clear on the ratings. Very impressive last time out. We've got an in no special. Gregory to win by over two lengths, nine to two from seven to two. I think he's going to win. He's currently trading at seven to four. I think he's going to win well. Back in the nine to two, he's got to win by over two lengths. Uh, in the last 10 years, I think six out of the 10 winners have been seven to two or shorter. And then even three of the others have been sort of around the six to one mark. So it's, it is a race which seems to you know, get, get the market right or focus, pace, focus around the front end. So, that's why Chess Beast has probably been the best backed against Gregory, 5-1 from 7-1. to one. And I think the favourite might be too tough to be here. OK, that's the Queen's Fast then. And the last race on day uh, day two of the Royal Ascot is the Windsor Castle Stakes. Again, another uh, big field here, 26 of them uh, running. But um, uh, the, the two-year-old races, uh, the, the market's pretty much been uh, holding up for the last couple of weeks. And Barnwell Boy has been pretty popular uh, for, the, uh, for the Johnstons. Uh, uh, over the uh, the past week or two, after that impressive good would win, the form's working out quite nicely. And he's three to one favourite. Johannes Brahms is seven to two. Maximum Impact seven to one. Bombay Bazaar tens. Inquisitively is twelve to one. Fourteens Alabama. Fandom fourteens. Supersonic Man fourteens. Uh, and then bigger prices the rest. And um, a lot of horses are uh, chancing their arm here. But um, I think Barnwell Boy, um, you get the feeling that he's going to be in a lot of the the two year races throughout the season. Keels, he was he was really impressive. He he, he knew his job. The forms worked out. Big RPR. Yarder in cracking Nick. Yeah, decent time figure as well. I mean, yeah. he's, he's had one run. He's top on. He's top on top speed. Uh, yes, he's gonna. You know, you're 26 runners, haven't you? In the back of a three to one shot, 26 runners. But you can probably rule out 15 uh, as just there for the day out. Yeah. Uh, as long as they and don't. Why not? As long as they don't get in the way. <laughs> yeah, that is true. <laughs> you know what I mean? But he's he's going to be on the speed. So yeah, that yeah, exactly. Be yeah. So he's going to be on the sheet. He's going to be hard to be. If, if if there's one that I could, you know, back each way against him, it might be Bombay Bazaar. Yeah. Um, I just like the way he picked up when he finally got going at Beverly last time. I think Asker's going to suit him, uh, and he'd be finishing strongly. But I wouldn't be surprised if Barnwell Boy was, by some margin, the best horse in this race. Okay, yeah, Barnwell Boy, 3-1. to one. And always like a horse at, at Ascot. I mean, Brad Sell today, for example, six furlong form, uh, dropping back to five, plenty of early pace, and Barnwell Boy kind of ticks that box uh, uh, here. Tom, was there anything uh, in against the, the favourite? Could the O'Briens win uh, uh, again with Johannes Brahms, who took a while to get going at, uh, at Nace, but again, he's another C-Uni, isn't he? Yeah, no, I don't fancy Johannes Brahms that much. I thought Maximum Impact had a chance, definitely. Uh, Barnwell Boy is very interesting. Star Spandle Banner has an amazing record at Ascot. The Wow Signal, State of Rest, loads of Anthem Alexander. Over the years, they've always run well at Aristia and a few others. They've always run really well at Ascot. So I think he'll go really well, Barnwell Boy. The time figure was excellent. If you're looking for a real sort of uh, outside shot, I see he's been well back today, uh, which, uh, which was a bit uh, annoying. Inquisitively, his form at Windsor has worked out remarkably well. The horse that, uh, that won that got pulled out of the uh, Ascot race. Queen Chief Manicato of the Coventry won it, but the third, fourth, fifth, and all of them have won out of it. He was drawn 14. You know what that's like on, on decent ground at Windsor. It was really hard. He showed incredibly good pace. Jamie Spencer's on. Thought he might go well at a big price, but I see he's not a big, that big a price anymore. He has a has plenty of fine. So I thought Barnwell Boy would win it, but uh, my, my sort of one against the field was inquisitively. Okay. For, for Ollie Sangster, first year train. Mm -hmm. Inquisitively, yeah. a 12 to 1 shot. Uh, Simon, see us out with the Windsor Castle Stakes, please. 
by Clayton each way, not three, which I think is uh, not particularly surprising given how a huge field it is then. And uh, yeah, there's a maximum impact. Alice Haynes is one of our Coral Race Club trainers. Uh, uh, in fact, our Coral Race Club was trained by Alice Haynes as far as he runs at Chelmsford on Thursday, a second time in a maiden, hope for an improved performance on debut. Uh, but yeah, she's done brilliantly with her two rolls the last couple of seasons. And this is a big, big day for a big runner. And I know she, she hopes that he's very good and can run very well. And he also had that course for So, uh, of course, this ball. So I'm hoping maximum impact can run well each way for Alice. Okay, lovely stuff. Maximum impact is a seven to one shot. Windsor Castle selections, Paul? Go on, Barnwell Boy, I think. Barnwell Boy. Fair enough. And Tom? Uh, Barmore Boy and Inquisitively would be my two. Okay, fair enough. Uh, yeah, and I do think Barmore Boy is going to be fairly hard to beat, which is a bit dull, isn't it? A two-year-old race uh, with this many runners. And Simon? Yeah, maximum impact for me. Okay, lovely. Right, uh, we'll get that apps in a second after this. Yeah, get involved in the members club and on day two of Royal Ascot. Let's unleash the nap, starting off with the man to my left, Paul Keeley. I'm going to go Perotto in the Hunt Cup. Why not? Only 29 rivals. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> flabbergasted. Absolutely flabbergasted. That's your selection. That is a absolutely uh, classic Keels nap. But what about you, Tom? Uh, I think Beautiful Diamond will win the Queen Mary myself. OK, there we go. Uh, I'll go with Queen uh, Aminatu in the Duke of Cambridge Stakes. And Simon? Uh, I think Gregory is probably the, the, the solid favourite on the card and will win the Queen's Vars. OK, there you go. Gregory in the Queen's Vars. That's it for uh, tonight's show. Then we'll be back again uh, to uh, tomorrow with a refreshed Paul Keely. Uh, get a lion keels. Any plans in the morning? Going to the cafe? Or... Oh, I'm having a lion. Yeah? Oh, I'm going to get up, walk the dog, have breakfast, and I'm going to go back to bed. Oh, what a treat. <laughs> I'm coming in later in the day. It's great. Perfect. One day I'll get to do it. Absolutely perfect. And uh, Tom, any plans tomorrow? Actually, don't worry about it. Well, you, you're, not, you're not leaving the office. I know you're not. No. You've got no. a jumper on, Tom. I have. I'm, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to play <laughs> Scramble, Scramble to my heart's content. <laughs> did you eBay it? Did you, did, you, did you Google it? Did you find it? I, not only did I eBay it, I bought it. Are you and it's arriving tomorrow, so I'm going to play it with my kids <laughs> and son till the half of the tent. Yeah. Are you being, ser are you being serious? Yeah, yeah, I'll report back. I might even have it here if you want it. Brilliant. But I will, I'll report back on how, what I think of your screwball scramble tomorrow. Perfect. Your kids are going to absolutely love it, Tom. Absolutely They're love it. They're 16 and 21. That's, I mean, I'm 38. And I'm start, <laughs> I, I, if it was here right now, I would play it. So uh, there you go. Simon missed all this last night, so he's no idea what we're talking about. But uh, anyway, Simon, are you back tomorrow? No, it's Steve-O back. It's Steve-O tomorrow night. Uh, so yeah, this is my, my thing. I'm back, yeah, back of the races tomorrow. Looking forward to it. But I've got to be, I've got to be at Ascot at 7.30. I'm doing talk sports. And they're doing an outside broadcast for the Coral Box. So I've got to get up at the crack of dawn and get to Ascot very early tomorrow. So I'm going to bed now, but I'm not having a lion. No, fair enough. Well, I can't wait for them to tell you about Frankie's ban. Anyway, right, we'll be back tomorrow night, <laughs> 6.30 till 7.30. Enjoy, enjoy day two of Royal Ascot. <laughs>